Hey everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, bringing you my review of Fantastic Four, issue 23. And this was a good issue. It dealt with the whole Dark Harvest thing and makes Empire Six make more sense with what's going on with the Omniway projector thing. And I like the end of this. This worked in pretty well. Uh, you could still have fun with this tie-in, even if you didn't know exactly the whole extent or how it completely lined up with Empire, but having both together really works very well. I was at first going to read this issue before uh, Empire issue 6, but it was so kind of pivotal. I'm like, oh, what? What? And then I was like, oh, okay, read that first, came back, I'm like, oh, that kind of worked better here now. So we start off and we see that the Kotati are pretty much like, we got New York! And it's like, oh crap, New Yorkers are like, somebody help us please! Got the Kree and the Skrull fighting, they're like, they're not helping us, it's like, space aliens fighting one another. Like, yeah, but at this point, New York in the Marvel Universe, their level of like, ah shit, is kind of at the right point because it is not that it happens every Tuesday. But it happens enough on most Tuesdays for it to be like, it's happening again. Holy crap. That's, of course, when the Fantastic Four come in and the Kota this one Kotati dude's like, not the Fantastic Four I know of. And they're pretty much coming in to try and figure out what's going on. They're, of course, trying to look for Joven. And they don't have any kind of place where he's at. Uh, Val goes to uh, the... Kree and Scroll Force and be like, hey, uh, I'm Valeria Richards. Ah, uh, oh, spawn of, um, Reed. Mr. Fantastic. Say your piece. Seen this blue kid? <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. It's like, hey, have you seen this child? And he's like, uh, no. Have you heard any kind of, like, weird stuff? But of course they point him towards, like, alchemics. Like, there's, like, weird stuff going on that some stuff was taken. He's like, yeah, they kind of came in here for some reason. And... We see, of course, that uh, Spider-Man is uh, talking to Wolverine about how, yeah, Peter Parker and I used to own this stuff and everything in the Baxter building. He's like, yeah, yeah. It's okay, man. It's okay. And of course, uh, Frank's like, hey, hold up, hold up, watch. My sister's going to brainstorm and figure out what they're trying to do. And it's just like, got it. And we then, of course, shift to the Dark Harvest as we see the whole Omniwave projector kind of thing coming into focus as they're using Jovan to kind of deal with everything going on. I'm trying to use that. We see, of course, the head dude of the Dark Harvest talking with uh, Koi. And like, yeah, we got this. We're going to do it. And like, yeah, you will definitely have your place in the Kotati world as we uh, pretty much take over the meat bag people. Whenever that's. Whenever they're like called meat and meat bag people, it just reminds me of Knights of the Old Republic, and I'm just like, yeah, all right. Well, we then have to get, of course, Nkala into this, so we see that she's kind of still out, but kind of wakes up and pretty much shape shifts into Sky, and we don't really get much other than she really feels connected with Alicia. I hope that that gets explained a little bit better. I might have missed something or whatnot when I was reading or whatnot, but she evidently really respects Alicia and everything. Yeah, cool. And goes to fly off the sky, and Alicia finally kind of figures out that Sky is still kind of fucked up over in another bin. Like, what? Of course, uh, Valeria's trying to figure out what to do using the kind of techno kind of stuff going on and actually starts enlisting Spider-Man's help and like dealing with that. Uh, Wolverine's pretty much trying to give Franklin a pep talk, even though it's like, yes, in the realms of babysitting, having one of your wards stabbed and the other one abducted by tree people to make a uh, weird kind of use of a device really is not the best. Now granted, those kids aren't dead yet. The ultimate failure is game over, both dead, and potentially becoming cannibalistic Mad Max kind of style. Going ooga chicka, ooga chicka. That, I think, is the worst kind of case scenario. That would have been funny if, like, somebody had said something like that. That right? It's like, hey, they're not dead yet, and the world hasn't turned into a cannibal hellscape yet, so you kind of got a way to kind of, like, change this around. I do kind of like seeing Wolverine trying to pep talk and be like, yeah, you're an Omega level mutant. 
you're like the biggest gun here this side of Krakoa. And he's like, yeah, me and my family are in the center of this, and I should be out there fighting this thing, and instead I'm babysitting, and even that, I'm failing at this babysitting. He's like, it's fine. Of course, they get called by uh, Alicia. said, one of the children is now missing. That makes two now. Shit. And they're able to kind of like, uh, Wolverine's able to find her kind of blood. It's got her sent and goes to find her. Uh, well, with the rest of the Fantastic Four. We then see that they're like, the head dude's pretty much gloating, and then we just see that she has pretty much shaped shift into one of the priests, and is just like trying to like remove uh, Joe Van, and it's just kind of funny. It's just like, I wish there's a little bit more of the panels, so that way you can see her creeping up. I'm just going to take this. Of course, she gets captured, put into it, and we get the whole Omniwave thing, kind of similar to what we see in Empire 6, uh, except more kind of fleshed out. We see that, of course, the Fantastic Four pop in. Spidey's like, oh, so it's a hate wave. It's a hate beam. Ah, it's like the internet, but worse. I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, Spidey's got some good lines in this one. Very spicy ones. And, of course, they start fighting uh, the different kind of people. Uh, Spidey like wraps up this one dude and everything but of course we see the same thing that happened in Empire 6 happen here Valeria is able to talk to them both because we see that these Korean scroll forces are like fighting and everything Koi of course is pretty much being like yeah you did good you did good dude and, like, yeah. and then of course Valeria uses the whole thing of telling them that of course when you were fighting in the arena you're both each other's constants and you had to work together to get through that. Of course, Franklin throwing in, you had to work together to do that. You, know, you could really usher in an era of unity and peace and gets them to get to the positive emotions and then do that. Everybody gets back, yay! And of course, the Dark Harvest is like, no! And Koi is like, yeah, you guys suck, and pretty much planifies them. We get a Green New Deal kind of zinger out of Spidey, which worked very well, and I was like, I was not expecting that! It works! But damn! And everybody's pretty much Cree people. I'm like, yeah, we kind of worked this out. Um, uh, Wolverine helps to get in call out. She's like, don't stab me. Like, I'm not. And he's like, listen, kid, you ever need anything, call me. I owe you a, <laughs> I owe you a favor, man. And it was really, I really like those kind of sides. You see Wolverine just like going at it like the Hambo Berserker that he can be, but he's a really good man. And he recognizes when he is fucked up, and he's like, listen, kid, I didn't mean to, like, kill you. I knew that the Korean Skrulls were, like, backing about, and I didn't know that you're a kid, combat zone kind of thing. I owe you a favor. And it's, like, kind of cool. I hope we see some more of that going on. And of course, they're like, all right. Nobody's dead. Except for somebody being stabbed, but we're getting better from that. Um, we have defeated our foes. And, of course, we're going to have cleanup later on, but, like, we're good right now. And, of course, uh, and Kala's like, yeah, I want to go to the land of Disney. As, as Wolverine's like, sure, kid. And I'm like, I really kind of would take a one-shot or even just a weird little thing that they are at Disney with Wolverine and Spider-Man and Franklin and Valeria. I'm like, yeah, you kids did okay. And... I really like the different kind of dynamics of having Franklin and Val paired up with Spidey and Wolverine. I hope that we... I would like an, a story arc. Now, granted, I understand that this was their story arc, but this is kind of the introduction of that kind of Fantastic Four team. I would like to see more of this in the future, of uh, seeing them and how they deal and handle with certain situations, because this gave me that kind of taste, and I'm like, this is an interesting kind of team-up pair-up, because you've got Val's brains, kind of like the Reed position, You've got Franklin is pretty much uh, your Johnny kind of dude. It's like, ah, he wants to do stuff, but he's got insane power level with pretty much you could also kind of fuse him with Ben because of the power level set he usually has. It's more of his hotshot kind of nature. We've got Wolverine, who's just kind of like your tank dude that you got. you got Spidey doing his Spidey best. It's like, yeah, okay. It's just, I like their different kind of group dynamic. And I hope that we see that some more in the future because this worked out pretty well, in my opinion. So those are my opinions on the issue. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, also like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.